Hey, what's up gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Not actually ready to start the vlog, but I just wanted to... I felt like this was a vloggable moment here. Look, look at what's happening down here. This is the tub that I had some of my coke bop in, that coconut based potting mix, and uh, it uh, would appear that the chipmunks have decided that this would be a really great place to store their sunflower seeds. Uh, not so much. I'm going to have to pull all those out. I'm repotting this coconut palm over here for the coconut palm video, and this is the mix I want to use. I'll be adding stuff to it, but it's just... It, 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 why? It's growing in my philodendron gigantium too, which I'll show you here in a little while at some point. I'll try and get to it because I need to pull all the little sunflowers out. But I mean, come on guys, what the crap? Pull all these seedlings out. You know, the irony here is that anytime I try and plant my own sunflowers, the chipmunks and squirrels dig those seeds up every single year. And I do, I try every single year. I plant sunflowers and sometimes I even, I put like screens and cages over the where I put the seeds so that they can't get dug up, but still, they manage to get to them somehow. I'm thinking maybe next year I'll just go ahead and leave out a bowl of sunflower seeds. I'll just take a big, like, tray of sunflower seeds and leave them out near where I want them planted, and just maybe I'll let them do it, the planting for me. So apparently seems to be how they want to do things. I don't want all these seedlings in here. They're gonna sap all the nitrogen and nutrients out of this potting mix. Is that an acorn? See the acorn? There's an acorn in here too. Funny guys. These were all sunflowers that were in my bird feeders. My, I usually use the black oil sunflower mix and uh, yeah, that's what these were. Tons and tons and tons of little sunflower seedlings. Okay but like I said I wasn't even ready to start the vlog but I just felt like this is this is worth talking about, because it's just, it's just it's so dumb. They're so cute and dumb, those little chipmunks. I suppose I could vlog this, because the coconut palm video, I'm not going to be talking about potting the plant up. I did that in the first one. This particular coconut is a much larger one, and I had it potted down there by the house, and that I mean, you probably can't see it. There's a blue pot right above my finger. It's like a tall square pot. And uh, this dog's Tucker, my dog Nato, he just kept knocking the thing over with his tail. And uh, the pot was just a little bit too heavy for what me right now. I, mean, I could lift it, but I'm not supposed to be lifting heavy things. So I'm going to repot it into something that's lightweight that I can move somewhere up high, like onto the edge of the hot tub where it's going to be safe from the dog Nato tail. But it's still, I mean, this poor thing's been through it because he just kept knocking it over and I would stake it up. He'd knock it over. I did move the pot a couple times and it just, there really weren't other spots that get enough sunlight. So he still just kept knocking it over constantly. So that's why like, I just said it, something lightweight that I can move up high. And I like this pot for it a lot because it has the holes on the sides, which I like. And it has tiny little, see those little pegs? So it'll stay raised up off the ground. The only thing I don't like is that there's actually not a single hole in the very bottom of it, but everything is sloped towards those outer holes. Uh, I might go grab the drill and just like pop a few in there just to be safe because if you've seen that video, I'm sure, I haven't filmed it yet, but I'm sure I will have talked about how drainage is extremely important with these guys. Or gals, or non-binary palm friends. Which is also why I'm using the Coco Bop. And I need it to be very airy, very light. It needs to be a nice, airy, and light blend. And yeah, I'm sure I'll still keep, probably for the next few weeks, keep finding little sunflower seedlings in here. <laughs> See that? I just keep finding my bro And some of them I'm not getting the roots on them. That's okay. I actually don't mind the idea of having a little bit of organic matter in here that'll do some decaying. But, you know, that'll help the plant, especially since I don't want to fertilize this heavily right from the very beginning. Why do I, do you ever do, like, I just started blending this together. I haven't added the sand to it yet. I didn't even put the sand in there, so why am I, but there's no reason to blend this up yet. I'm gonna have to blend it again. Come on now. This isn't rocket science. I should know by now how to get these things done. Where's my sand? Here we go. The sand was wet. I needed two hands to get that done. I didn't put a ton of sand in here, but it should be more than enough just because this coke bop, it drains really well as it is, and I put just the teeny, tiniest amount of compost in there. That compost will just help kind of liven that mix up just a teeny, tiny bit kind of like, you know how people make bread and they have a starter? 
helps get the new loaves of bread going. Introducing that cultured yeast into the mix helps get it moving. I kind of view it sort of like that. It's just kind of help move things along as far as getting all the beneficial fungus and bacteria and everything growing down there around the roots to help encourage new root growth and get the proper hormones going for everything. It was just a teeny tiny bit. There are supplements you can use to encourage the growth of mycorrhiza, but just adding a little bit of compost is essentially doing the exact same thing. How entertaining is this? I'm gonna move on from this. Finally got that repotted. I had to do a whole thing with it. This palm tree is just, it's been a pain. It hasn't been a pain because of the palm tree, just because the dog kept knocking the thing over. Now that I have it in something more lightweight and I can move it, it should be better. It's just not the ideal time of year to even be like doing that. It doesn't, they don't want to be repotted right now. It's not very warm out. In fact, it got down to like 44 last night. Very chilly for September. The ground's nice and warm. The water's very warm, so I don't think it actually got that cold back here. It was cold enough though that I moved the iguana. The iguana's been inside for a couple days. Now I need to look at what the, the chipmunks did in the pot that has my gigantia in it. <laughs> They're so resourceful aren't they since the philodendron hasn't actually like rooted itself in here i'm not that bothered by it because it's not like there's going to be any damage to the roots however these are all going to suck nutrients out that i think i would like to leave there for the plant that it's intended for go no figure i can never ever grow sunflowers from seed and then here we are end of the year my little fluffy farmers have been out here diligently making sure to plant up my planters and my soil reserves with sunflowers. Lots of sunflowers. We've got a new leaf coming up in there. That's exciting. Uh, this plant I didn't take inside, but I threw a bucket over it. Not the most glamorous way to handle things, but holds the warmth in from the ground. I just set the pot down on the ground and put a bucket over it. It's only supposed to be cool for a couple of days. Like I think the high today is maybe in the 70s, upper 70s, which is, that's unusual for September, but it happens. The lows in the 40s were last night, and then again, I think tonight. And then things are supposed to warm up after that. Come on, there's like just one left in here that I can't quite get my fingers around. Yeah, at least they're not digging up my other plants. That would be a whole different thing and I'd be much more upset. They're helping to liven the soil up. And now I need to go wash my hands because I've just been assuming any of these spots that have that many seeds in them, probably also a fair amount of chipmunk poop. Yeah, that's better. All cleaned up D chipmunk seed. I got my new lights in the mail. Lovely backdrop of mums here that I ordered from Proven Winners. I'll be using those in the fall planters that better be happening in this video at some point. I started this vlog off very early. I still have like several days to be working on this one and I just want to wait until I want to just give these a few days to pop open. I'd like for them to at least like be right where they're starting to bloom when I put those together. So I'm still I'm just kind of killing time here. I mean, not really. This is something I was going to do in a video anyways, but I just meant in the sense of taking some more time to get those planters started, even though you might be here to see the video on planters. If that's the case, I'm so sorry if that's the case. It's a vlog. What can you do? Viva Color. These are the lights that I've been using over my garden. I went ahead and ordered a couple more sets of them. I've talked about them before. This isn't sponsored. I don't even know. It says by JC Product. I don't know him. I'm not getting anything for this. I just have a set and I liked them. So I thought I would order a couple more. As far as lighting goes, they're a little bit more on the pricey end. Normally I get really, really inexpensive lights from my garden. And it, that worked out for a while. Just the panel LEDs, they were okay. But they just, they were burning out. Like every year I'd have to get new ones. And that could be the same with these. I don't know yet. The thing I liked about these, there are a lot of things. This isn't going to be that easy to unbox. This is just, it's like a whole big, we'll put that down there. Get the box off the table. There we go. That's better. Got an instruction manual. I already know how to use them. We'll talk about that though. They also came with these green boxes to put the transformer inside of so that they don't get wet when they're, I just stopped in the middle of that so that they don't get wet when it rains when they're outside just stop talking that's not how we do things and then this looks like an kind of an extension cable sort of 
thing. So you can run these wires a little bit longer. I don't think I'll need that, but it's good to have. Okay, tripod, get over here. I need to get a new tripod. This is my tripod. It's got a, it's got a bum leg. Get the bubble wrap off of these. Like I said, this isn't sponsored. So this isn't gonna be like a full on product review. But I take you along the process while I set up one of these, not both of them. It's a little bit of a pain to set up just because the, the way the lights are strung together, it's nice, you know, having four different lights to work with, especially off the one transformer. But it's also <laughs> just a pain keeping everything straight. And it's only four lights. Maybe that's just me and the way my brain works. Just look at, you see, look at all oh, these cords. It's a lot. They get tangled up very easily. It's just, it's a whole thing. Oh, and that extension cord, that goes from this piece right here, this unscrews, you put one end of the cord in right there, and then you do the thing, and you do the thing, that the other thing that makes it longer. Uh, I had mentioned in my last video, well, not my last video, two videos ago, uh, about doing some more lighting out here. I have some on an Alexander Palm that you can't even see right now. And then I went ahead and tossed one of those sets that I just opened underneath this big banana clump all the way down there. And I'm thinking I'm going to put the this, this other cluster, right here under these. That'll just kind of finish this whole wall off so everything's nice and lit up at nighttime. Four spotlights under the smaller clump might not be necessary, but actually it's probably fine. This clump isn't that small. It's pretty dang big. It's, it's not as big as that one, but it's still, I mean, it's a good, <laughs> it's all the way up. To the windows on the second story. I don't know how high that is, but it's it's very, very high. The bananas were busy growing this year. We'll say one thing I did figure out when setting up the other clusters of these is that it's a lot easier to go ahead and spread them out and start from there. Just start with the one furthest away from the plug because otherwise it just, the whole thing just becomes a tangled mess. I was gonna film the whole process of like sticking them in the ground, but I don't, is that necessary? You're not gonna be able to see anything. There's plants in the way. I need to repot this hibiscus. It, you, it's pot broke and now it's just sitting. I, I'll take care of it. Don't worry, it'll be okay. All right, so I went ahead and I dropped these around in here so that there are two underneath this banana clump. And then I have just one down here that's more in the back, or I guess I should say in the front of the garden to make sure that the undersides of these leaves get lit up. Hopefully they will. You know, when there's a lot of foliage, in the way it's gonna make the whole spotlight thing a little bit more tricky so there's only three over there on the bananas just to see how it looks i went ahead and i ran one more all the way over here the fourth one so it will kind of catch the undersides of the ginger and maybe the croton at nighttime i don't know i have to wait for it to get dark to actually see how that's gonna play out and how they need to be adjusted so now i have this lit up the alexander palm and those bananas yeah we'll come back when it's dark everything's controlled uh, through bluetooth through an app and they should all sync together should uh, we'll see technology you know how that goes i love the colors i wish i had just a little bit more control over the way the the fade goes like the speed of them but overall i'm loving how this looks and what a perfect way to spend the last night of summer and that's going to be so nice when it's time to go ahead and do a nighttime garden tour. Which hopefully it won't be too long from now. But it's fall. No more summer. And you know what? I'm okay with it. So many years, I get bummed out about it. But you know what? The thing with 2020, I'm fine. Bye. The further we can get away from this summer, the better. I don't care. I'm ready to move forward and make the most of what time I have. And the time I have right now is fall. I'm really excited. Dig in here and do some fall planters. So here's the thing, you know, every year I usually do like several weeks sometimes of fall planters. And I decided this year, nope, just gonna do it in a vlog and uh, not get them all done, but get a few of them done. I have, <laughs> um, a few plants set out here that I think I can work with. Uh, there's actually more than this. I just don't have everything over here right now, but what I need for right now, I have over here. I have mentioned before that sometimes my eyes are bigger than my planters. Let me show, look at, here's the planters. There's two of those, they're stacked together. And then there's my 
<laughs> here's what I have to choose from. No, I'm going to be doing more than just those two. I'm, I have those two barrels down there, and then I want to do at least one drop planter, which is where I just like to put a bunch of fall plants into just a plastic nursery pot. And that way, when I have the tropicals moved inside, which will be in, you know, about a month or so from now, depending on the weather, and then I can pop those in place of like the tropicals into the ceramic planters and just kind of have a little bit of color out here for the end of the grow well the growing season's over but you know what i mean for the end of the year basically being out here and then there might be like one or two other planters that i save for another time also when i was getting a lot of my fall plants i picked them out thinking i was going to plant up my great big giant whiskey barrel and I've decided that I don't think I'm actually going to plant that up this year just because it is it is so heavy when it's full of soil. And uh, I'm, you know, not supposed to be moving heavy, heavy things around right now. So maybe this year I'll just skip that, which I'm okay with. All my fall planters, for the most part, end up on my front porch. And that whiskey barrel, I only like that out there until about Thanksgiving, and then it's got to go. And so come Thanksgiving time, I still don't know if I, I would hope I can lift something like that by then, but I don't know. I just figure, better safe than sorry, and I'll probably just scrap that. Unless I have like a ton of other plants left over, which I don't think I will, then maybe I'll plant it up and just keep it in the backyard where I don't have to move it around. That would be an option. I think I'm going to need another table. I'll have to get this moved. I've been working on wiring up this Japanese maple bonsai over here. I overpotted this thing. Traditionally with a bonsai, you want to go with a pot that's about the same size as half the height of the plant. So this is, this is clearly too big, but they just grow so dang slow when you have them in their little pots like the best way to get the growth to speed up is to just put them in the ground and dig them up and put them into a bonsai pot when it's time so i just kind of figured i'd that maybe a happy middle ground might be to over pot it so maybe it's not really bonsai yet but i was working on the wiring here and i missed a couple branches i overprint that's just, that's not what's happening here i need to move this plant yeah, another thing I like about doing this in a vlog is that if this were like a regular weekly video, I'd be like, I need this all clean and tidy. Nah, this is a vlog. It's going to get dirty, so why bother cleaning it up? That doesn't make any sense. All right, let's get this going. Went ahead and got some potting mix in there, just an all-purpose potting blend. And now it's time to pick some stuff out. I don't really have a specific plan for any of these. The way I do my fall planters is pretty generic with any type of arrangement. I want something tall in the middle, some things to contrast it a little bit lower than that, and then a spiller. I don't have a lot of spillers. There aren't a ton of fall spillers, so I might be skipping that on some of these. This millet would make a nice centerpiece here. That'll do. I'm just going to name these off as I go. It would, it'll would it take me eternity to put these all up on the screen. This is Jade Princess Ornamental Millet. has a nice pretty chartreuse foliage, nice lime green color. Doesn't get too terribly tall. I like that. That looks good there. And I don't Need to, my sprinklers are going off right now, so there's a little bit of background noise. I don't need to have everything centered. I mean, I want things to be somewhat even. They're not going to be symmetrical, but this pot's only going to be seen from one side, so I'm not even concerned about this millet being the center of the pot. I want that far in the back. And to go behind here, I have this gorgeous campfire coleus. Isn't the foliage on this just beautiful? There's two plants in it. So I'm going to go ahead and split it just right down the middle and put one on each side. Yeah, I know. It's not looking great. Just wait. I got to keep filling it up. Be patient. This needs some flowers. What about some zinnias? Okay. The zinnias I was able to get are a little bit ratty, but they'll work. Those will be fine there. They don't have that much time left in them anyways. See, there's still so much room to work with here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in this nice bright cluster of marigolds. I like the way the foliage on these contrasts with the zinnias behind them. It doesn't really matter. I'm not putting that much thought into this because like I said it's a fall planter. I tend to just kind of go with the flow and pack things in. It just has such nice fall coloration to it. One of these is a little bit wonky because I had to divide it out of its container but I think when I put something else in front of it that should help Maybe that'll help hold it back. Kale time. This one's called Peacock Red. I completely forgot I have a great big kale I wanted to put in the very front of this. I might have to take it apart and start over. Oops. Eh, I think I can make it fit. There we go. That's better. This is so much prettier in person. Okay, planter number one is done. I know it looks funny. I need to do some 
pruning on here, I think that that's going to help because it was just too long and leggy. That'll help it flush back out. The kale and cabbage, if you've been following the vlogs, you know, I've been having trouble finding some, particularly finding cabbage that hasn't bolted. And this kale has bolted. That's why it's like doing this, but I was okay with it. Cause I bought it thinking like, you know what? That's going to work because if that kind of comes out over the front, there's so much room in the back to do other things. It is an absolutely beautiful kale. This looks so much better in person. I turn my exposure down just a smidge. Let's see. Yeah, it kind of helps bring out the vibrancy somewhat. If the mums I had gotten from Proven Winners were bigger, those would be back here. But the marigold, that was the highest thing I had to go in between the kale and then the uh, millet in the back. And that millet should get a little bit taller, not much, but just enough so it's kind of like right here. Then it'll be that red from the coleus on each side, which, which will help highlight those plants. Then we've got some of this peacock red ornamental kale on the sides also. This is just, it's fun. It has a really nice texture to it. That's the main reason I tossed those in there, is just for texture. And now maybe you can see why I wasn't that worried about having a speller. You can't even see the front, so it doesn't even matter. So that does also kind of take away from the fun of them being in a barrel, but yeah, it's fine. Sometimes you just don't get to have your cake and eat it too. It's no big deal. Okay, and before I can move on to doing my next little barrel planter, I'm trying to get it straight in my head what I was going to do with the kales and cabbages I picked up. I didn't really show you. There's quite a bit here. I only have two big ones, a bunch of small ones, a flat that I dropped down here on the ground, but they look okay. I had them gripped onto the edge of the gorilla cart and it just went, which I should have known was going to happen. I think they're okay. Before I can move on, I just have to sort some things out in my head. So some of the kale and cabbage I got are going to go on my front porch planters that have the windmill palms in them. They've been in plenty of videos. I potted them up, I think back in May and uh, all the impatience and annuals are going to have to come out of those in a couple of weeks. And then in the front, I want to alternate the kales and cabbages between ones that have purple or pink hues to ones that have more green and white. So each of those planters would have something like this in the fronts of them. I don't know if I'm feeling this as much as I thought I was, though. Just because this cabbage here is like a little bit bolted and the kale isn't, so it doesn't look quite right combined together having the three of the purple kales with the two cabbages and that could even out and you can with the when these start to bolt as long as temperatures are cool enough you can go ahead and bury that stem down so i can even that out when they're ready to go and to go into those planters see the predicament here is i also have two of these aren't these absolutely stunning they're called nagoya white ornamental kales i only have two of them that's all they had at the nurseries and i was thinking that i would really like to have these in the planters on my front porch but i'm liking them enough that i kind of want them back here where i'll see them more uh, i'll sort that out in my head and pick back up when i have things figured out what i have left for the barrel planters i think will work not as drastic as the other one but that's okay i actually this barrel it looks a lot nicer than the other one so i intentionally wanted the other one more full with something big in front of it so you couldn't see that it was kind of falling apart I mean, it's plastic, but like the paint was chipping off of it. And I wanted to put one of those nice mums in here. Who is it? The Stacy Dazzling Orange. Just starting to open up. They were in that video I did, I don't know, a video or two ago from this one where I unbox a bunch of mums from Proven Wonders. Y'all know what's going on there. Mums aren't like some of the other annuals. I'm going to try and treat this as a perennial, but mums aren't like a lot of other annuals that you can jam pack into these fall planters. It's one of the nice things about fall planters is you can really put a lot in them because they have such a short season to them. It's not something you grow for a really long time typically, but mums with their mounding habit, I have noticed just from personal experience they do better when they have that room to grow up and mound out they're going to be a little bit more prone to rot if you jam pack plants around them like i said that's just what's been my experience with them so i don't want to do quite as much in here so I just kind of mocked it up the stacy mum in the center that's going to give it room to expand there's a hookara to the side there for a little bit of contrast with some color more foliage then the back this is this is where things get wonky this is just a, a zebra grass right it's a it's a cute little zebra grass it's not this tall it's sitting on top of its root ball right now see this look at how this is really short and dinky so when this is actually planted in here it's going to be more like down there which i guess that's okay yeah that would probably be 
all right that would be fine it is going against absolutely every single one of my gardening desires to not pack this full like i said about the mums it's not going to like that so i went ahead and i pulled the hooker out i had a kale in there it's down it's right there now i was just like you know what this isn't it's gonna be too much so less is more i want to give this mum room to spread and fill there's some lobularia over the front here just white alyssum it's gonna smell really nice in the morning and the evening time the grass in the back and then the mum right there this is fine i want to do more but this is fine oh it might help if i actually had this pointed straight at the camp it doesn't really help that much it just looks so plain but it'll look beautiful in a few weeks i will probably more than likely almost definitely also toss some pansies in here just because it needs more i just don't have it right now so that will help liven it up having some pansies tucked right here 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 and then over there just a little it's just that's what it needs it's just that little extra pop okay this one i'm gonna be able to let out some of that energy that i just pent up from not stuffing that last one full this is one of the ones that I've been holding off on. One of the reasons I've been holding back with all of these guys over here was because I'm going to just fill this one. Just pack it full of annuals. It's just that metal wagon. Usually I line this with burlap because you can see it has these holes on the sides. I didn't have any, so I just used some old window screening that I had laying around. Cut that up. It's vinyl or fiberglass. But it's, it's not metal. So it shouldn't rust out. And I did spray this down with Rust-Oleum last fall. I probably should have done that again, but I don't have any. So uh, rolling the dice there. It just, I just filled this up and it's less my potting soil. I think it'll be okay though. I did have a couple other planters I want to do, but I think I'll be displacing an awful lot of potting soil in here. I'm putting some big stuff in here. And if I were to mock this up, then it would go something like this. A kale or cabbage coming out the back here mm, i think i might need a bigger wagon big fountain grass in the metal you can't even see that can you oh there we go let's bring that up I'm gonna toss a croton in there see how that celosia is going to look i don't mind that that looks okay try and squeeze a zinnia into this too the only zinnias that i was able to find just they don't look that good so i would rather them be kind of packed in tight tightly oh and i have this lantana here too that looks so nice with that celosia doesn't it i think i might need to grab a smaller cabbage this one might that might be too much for this you know it really is amazing how many plants you can put into a tiny little planter once you get them out of those pesky pots and look there's still room to work with over here it's perfect remember annuals for the most part the euphorbia that's back there that's a perennial the zinnias can reseed but i don't think that they will i swapped the cabbage out for one that isn't smaller but it was another one that had started to bolt so it hangs better and there's more room next to it here's where i am now is over here in this little this gap back here i wanted to put one of the electric where is it one of these key lime mums in here the mums with those pretty green flowers that haven't opened yet but i believe that they will be pretty and like i was just saying about the mums they need space so uh, I might pull the euphorbia out, which would be okay, because I actually kind of need it for something else. And then put this key lime mum in here. I think that'll be really pretty. I don't know if it's going to be like too much of a stark contrast on this end from that end. But again, it doesn't really matter. That's the beauty of fall planters. You can just kind of put them together. As long as their requirements are met, light and water-wise, then it's okay. It's, they need to be compatible in that matter. I really like how this lantana looks with the celosia here. However, I think that the lantana would contrast better with the green on these flowers. What I might do is just go ahead and pull that out, even though I do really like it there. There might be room for both of those in there, actually. I would just prefer for this to be backed up against something with a little bit more color. Although, oh, I just remembered these get nice color on them when the temperatures get cooler at nighttime. They'll get like a pinkish outline on them. Perfect. I just, y'all just came along on a ride that didn't even need to happen. See, they <laughs> made a big dent. I, I told you, I was me putting a lot in here and um, I really meant it. It is off balance though. I wish I had one more of these lantanas to put over there. Like I said, I'm not necessarily trying to achieve like drastic balance here but it would be nice if there's just a smidge bit more symmetry like if i had one more of those lantanas to pop right over there i think that would look nice but i don't this is what i have the zinnias are long and leggy so i'll give those a cut back 
when this is all said and done. I still have a little bit of tidying to do and some soil to pack in around everything. I might grab some clippings from one of my purple heart plants and place that in front of that electric green, that in front of that green mum, because I think that purple would look really pretty there. But if I do that, then I'm going to want to tuck it in some other spots. And there aren't really many other spots in there. I can give it a shot. I don't know. I'm starting to lose light though, so we'll pick back up on this in the morning. I'm not going to say sometimes less is more because, you know, I like to pack these things nice and tight with plants. But I went ahead and I pulled the euphorbia out that was in here and I was like, oh, that's better. This is perfectly fine now. I don't know, that made it balance back out a little bit more in my mind. Now this zinnia originally had like three pink flowers on it when I bought it. Those have since died off. So if hopefully some of the other flowers that are on here over there, there's still some stems with some buds on them. Hopefully those will bud open with some pink and that'll help pull it together. If not, I'm okay with it because I think it looks just fine how it is. Lots of color, a lot going on there. I'm good with it. I don't know if I named off everything that was in here. I know I talked about the mum. I'm pretty sure I talked about the kale that's over there. This is the Magellan Mix Zinnia. It's just a yellow celosia there. This is an ornamental pepper in the front. I don't, uh, I screwed up and threw away. I already put those pots in the recycling and they had the sticker labels instead of the tags. Usually I pull the tags and hold on to them. So I know I had said I would go through and name them, but I just, a, I'm gonna forget with some of them. There are a lot of plants here, but it's an ornamental pepper of some sorts. This in the middle, that is a fireworks fountain grass. It's an annual here. I think they're good to zone eight or nine. So it'd be a perennial if you're in one of those zones, but they have that beautiful red fiery foliage on them. They're very pretty. There's a couple of croton divisions back there that honestly I think this would be fine with or without. I could pull those out and it would still look totally fine. Did I miss anything? And then that lantana, that was the only thing that I don't think I mentioned. It was just sold as an assorted lantana. So that's there. That's what that is. Okay, that was fun. More thing. I have so many more planters to do. Need to move on. Yeah, I really, I probably should have ended things with the wagon, huh? Because that's, that's probably going to be like the nicest out of all of these. I should have worked my way up to that. It's fine. We're hanging out. It's a vlog. It doesn't matter. The uh, rest of the planters that I have planned out or planned out, I should say, are just little things, quick little projects. I have this foam pumpkin here. I d have done these, I think, multiple years. I would say that this is, that doesn't look great anymore, so I don't know if I'm going to use that. And then all these little foam guys that are in here, they're not looking too good either. But in years past, I have taken this pumpkin and a few others. The other ones got kind of grungy, so I went ahead and threw them out. But there's a little hole cut in the bottom. I cut the top off, fill it with soil, and plant it up. Sometimes I'll do this with succulents or <laughs> what I really like to do, not with one that's quite the squat, but is to put a kale or a cabbage on the top. Let me see, let me grab one. Just like that, just simple. I didn't pot that in there, but I mean, you don't really need to, especially if you put some kind of embellishments around here, like that little fall garland thing I just had. It just, it looks like a cute little Halloween critter, but usually I would do this with one that's a little bit taller and that's all there is to that. It's the end of story. These, at least this one this year, this is one that I will have inside of my house. So I'm just going to put one of those, I think I'm going to put a Stacy mum in there. I went ahead, put some all-purpose potting mix in there and a marigold flower fell in the mix. And then I just pull that up into those corners. I like to do that before I put the plants in just because it makes it so much easier to backfill it. It's the plants in there, you just don't have as much room to work with as far as being able to make sure that the gaps up inside these edges here where things kind of bulge out, it's a lot harder to get those filled in. So I like to do that first. Oh, and look what I got. Grab some pansies. There's a honeybee that's still kind of waking up over there on top of this. So I'm gonna, I don't know why. I just really don't want to disturb the bee. I'm not worried about getting stung. It's just, no, I'm gonna give my little bee friend here a few more minutes to wake up. Hopefully the sun will get it going and then I'm gonna pack some pansies around the edge of this.
Okay, I think a little bee friend has moved on with these pansies here. Oh, the lighting. That's terrible. It went from sunny and cloudy and sunny and cloudy, and then there's this haze, but it's, it's okay. Pressing forward is what it is. I always have the hardest time when it comes to picking out the assortment packs. Like, you don't want to be with me at a nursery when I'm picking out pansies when they come in these assorted six packs because it takes me forever. I go through and I'm like, well, I have to get the perfect mix. I didn't do that this time. I just popped in real quick and I was like, okay, I'm gonna grab one of these that has a good amount of cool tones in it. And then I'll grab one of these that's a little bit more assorted and just tried my best to not think about it. So, and now I'm here going, man, I wish I had more of the warm tones, but that's okay. There's plenty of pansies here. Okay, the reasonably big cloud overhead. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one up. I have a pretty decent amount of these white and purple pansies. That's probably all I'm going to do in here. Loosen these up. Not because I'm trying to make it so the root mass doesn't wrap. That's not really going to be an issue with something like this, but so I can so I can squeeze those in there. And then just for a little bit of extra added detail, I'm tucking in just some sedum scraps that I grabbed from my garden. I just pulled them right out of the ground. They have some roots on them and just kind of plucking them apart and stuffing them in here. Just, just to add a little bit of texture. Good, the sun's back. I have some of those green sedums I'm going to put in there. Then I have some of these that have more of a reddish hue to them. Drop those kind of down here, put these in the middle. A little bit of contrast between the green that's on the sides. And some more just the regular green guys. As long as the tips, the very ends here, get down into the soil, they should be okay. I don't really expect any of these pieces to like take off and grow into big beautiful sedums or anything like that. Not this time of year, but they'll stay in there for a while. With the cooler temperatures and everything right now, they should stay looking decent for a while and hopefully they'll take root and grow, but you know, there's never guarantees with that. It's I just wanted a little something extra in there just to kind of come over the edges. Sometimes it's nice just to add the simple little details, especially since it's something I just have laying around, just growing in the garden, I can just pluck some up and stuff them in. If it were the like heat of summer, mid-July or something like that, I wouldn't do this, but this time of year, that shouldn't be an issue. And that's fun, I like this, especially, it's gonna look a lot better when this mum actually opens. The clock is ticking here. I don't think these are gonna be in bloom in time for this video. Now, if these little embellishments were in better shape, they've kind of aged and weathered. If they were looking nicer, I would wrap those around the edges too, but I think, think they've seen better days, so it's probably time to get rid of these. This one, it has some chunks taken out of it, but that side looks okay, so I can go ahead and just kind of set that in there. You can't even see it, but this is going to be in my house, in my garden window. It'll be more visible in there. The mums are toxic, so while I will have this in the house, it's going to be far out of the way from any of my pets. Nobody who wants to chew on this will be able to get near this. And last up, nice, simple, white, clean, crisp planter. Just a frost-proof pot that I picked up from Lowe's last spring, actually, and I'm just now getting around to planting this up. This pot... I really like this pot because something about it just screams simplicity. Like you could just throw one plant in the middle of this and I think that it would look spectacular. That being said, I'm still gonna stuff it full because I have all these plants to work with. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to try, well that didn't work out. I'm going to mix in plants that will have some evergreen interest and be perennial. Really, well, it's just the one. Just the one's gonna be perennial. This planter is gonna be out here all winter, so I wanna have a combination of plants that go inside this one that will be nice for the fall, but still have some winter interest. So the euphorbia in the back, that might be semi-evergreen, just kinda of depends on what the weather is going to be like this winter, really don't know. They're in zone six. Sometimes they're evergreen to semi-evergreen. If it's a bad winter, they will die back to the ground completely. Also going to put a mum in here. Now this mum I'm treating as an annual, so I'm not as worried about crowding it. This one is called Autumn Sunset. It has nice orange and yellow flowers on it. And then kale. Lots of kale. I'm putting a whole bunch of kale in here. I like how this looks, but I think it needs a trailer. I mean, not necessarily though. When I'm working with pots that tend to be a little bit more squat like this, they really don't have to have a trailer, but I just, I think it would look nice. Like I mentioned, I want this pot to have some character throughout the winter season. So I'm putting this creeping Jenny in here. I'm gonna try and center that a little bit more underneath this kale. They stay semi evergreen where I am up here in zone six. 
it just depends on the winter. That's just like I was saying with the Euphorbia. You just, you never really know. Well, I really don't think that this needs it. I have a six pack here of this purple Lobularia and I think it's just beautiful. And I love Lobularia and Alyssum. I talk about it a lot here in the springtime because it just smells so nice. I know I already mentioned that when I put it in one of the other planters. I think the only thing that I actually don't like about Alyssum and Lobularia is that they tend to just look terrible right after I plant them up. At least if I have to do anything with their roots, they just look bad. And when that happens, I don't really enjoy having them in the videos as much. Because, you know, we want things to look nice and pretty for the YouTube, but that's just not always reality. Sometimes things take a few days and need some time to adjust. So those will fill out, come down the sides, have those pretty purple flowers on them. I know purple isn't necessarily what we think when it comes to fall, right? Each their own though. That's just kind of a matter of personal preference. Before I keep going on and on, that alyssum, that's the clear crystal mix. Combination of whites and pinks and purples. And then the kills that are in here are the kamome pink. Kamome? Kamame? I'm not sure. I'm sure somebody will let me know down in the comments. I know that this one that I did in the pumpkin looks a little bit more spring-like with the purples, and then that is a mum that's going to have more of a pink flower. Not more of a pink, a, a, a straight-up pink flower on it. But I put it in a pumpkin, so that's fall, right? Yeah, those are just the colors I like and what I wanted to use. There's a pretty good smattering of options over here. Good selection of things. I don't think any of what I did looks too much alike, so there's a good variety of stuff here. With this one, uh, and probably around mid-November or so, that mum in the center is going to start to die back, as well as the ornamental pepper that's right behind it. I'll just cut those back and maybe throw like some pine cones or something in the center between the kale and that euphorbia in the back, just to kind of liven it up a little bit, and the alyssum will likely have died back by then too, and I'll cut that back. But the kale, the euphorbia, and that creeping jenny. Those should be, like I said, semi-evergreen. Just depends on the winter, we'll see. They're in a pot, so they're more exposed. If it looks like we're going to have really bad weather, then I'll probably toss like a paper bag or something over it for a little bit of protection. Just mostly because I would like for that euphorbia to make it through the winter, because I have some things I want to do with it next year. Next year, I'd like to do this pot up with just hardy succulents and just have a nice simple planter that's just sitting around on a little ledge somewhere that I don't really have to mess with and it just kind of does its thing every year. But I've had it for a while now, so I just really wanted to get it potted up. And I like this. I wish the mums were more open for the video, but uh, I waited several days and got to get this done. So I'll be sure to keep everybody posted on social media, I'm sure, because I'm really liking these mums. But also there's a garden tour coming up. So in that garden tour, they should they should have opened by then. One of the barrel planters I did not that long ago, I mean for you it was a couple days ago, for me that one's opened up a lot. Yeah, see just a few days can make a really big difference and look at how much better the lobularia looks in here after just a few days of being in there and getting a little bit of water. You can kind of start to see some of the nice characteristics on this mum. Still needs a little bit more time to open though. That's the case with all of them, they all need a little bit more time. Now I decided to not do the drop planters that I talked about in the beginning of the video and that's because when I was at the nursery picking up those pansies I um I came across these gigantic mums here. They were only like eight dollars. I got three of them. I almost got more because I thought about lighting one of my walkways with them that I decided that was no not to do that. They're just starting to open, but they are the perfect size for the pots that I was going to do the drop planters in. So I'm just going to drop these in those pots. So not going to be doing that. I do still have a lot of plants I'm working with out here. So this is just kind of really the beginning of things. I still need to do my kale and cabbage planters, which I decided to do in a separate video because I want to talk about the care and some other aspects with growing those. I say for now, this is a pretty good start. And then I have a Halloween planter that I'm going to do, assuming I can find the pot that I usually use for the Halloween planter. So there's still a whole bunch of stuff over there that I didn't get done. I think it's too soon for a Halloween planter, don't you think? Like, I think it's still need another week or two. Everything I planted up here is going to be good for part to full sun. Pretty low maintenance stuff. This time of year, the weather's nice and cool. I'm just not really going to have to worry about them very much. Oh, and I want to give you a better angle of that other barrel planter, because I told you, it looks so much better in person. I still don't know how well it's going to come across on camera. Nope, it's still just on camera. It doesn't look as good in person. This looks absolutely beautiful on the camera. Something about the depth and the dimensions. I don't like it when I look through the viewfinder, but when I just tilt my head a little bit away from the viewfinder, I'm like, oh yeah, that's beautiful. I planted this up knowing that it's going to be looked down on. I thought that maybe because before I was shooting from straight ahead that that's why it looked weird, but no, it still, still looks pretty wonky and off. 
from up here. That's okay. You just have to take my word for it. It's really pretty in person, I promise. Pretty here too, but it just looks kind of odd with that gigantic kale coming out the front. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I like it. And that's gonna do it. Like I said, there will be some more fall planter videos coming out. Not a ton, just a couple, like one, maybe two more. And then I will make sure that all of this is included in the garden tour, especially because I haven't placed these yet. Planning things out when you're trying to do them with a filming schedule, it's a whole thing. So that's why I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stop right here, try and get my head together and plan those things out. In the garden tour, these will hopefully be placed and they'll be more bloomed and be able to see what these various mums look like. That's gonna do it though. Thanks for hanging out while I toss together some fall planters. Usually get going on these a little bit earlier in the year, but I decided to just wait till temperatures cool because the kale and cabbage, they just take off with the heat we usually have in September. And then it's just a waste of money, but nighttime temperatures are cooler now, so they should stay nice and compact, hopefully. That's the goal, we will see. You know what, this right here with the pink flowers and the purple, that would have been really pretty in a white pumpkin. I don't have a white pumpkin. I had one, I threw it away, it started to look ratty. That would look nice. I might be transferring that over to a different pumpkin if I can find a white hollow foam one. I know they have them, I just, I don't have one right now. I meant down below, what's going on with your fall gardens? Doing any arrangements? What are some fun plants you like to work with? Do you even bother? For many years, I didn't even bother because I was like, what's the point? It's only gonna be for a few weeks, several weeks, really. It was just, you know, I talked about before, I used to have like a resentment towards fall. This year I'm embracing it, because like I said, I'm ready to move on from 2020. <laughs> Just like the faster, the better. And I didn't really get to do much planting this year because of all the, you know, the cancer and all that stuff. So I was excited to be able to get out here and just throw plants together and have fun with it and especially with fall arrangements because like I mentioned you don't have to place too much thought into them because one they're just so temporary you know you only have them for maybe a few months depending on where you live with the various colors and everything that are available available <laughs> what we have to pick from they just tend to go together you can just toss them together as long as they have the proper conditions to mash up well they're fine. Okay, that's gonna do it. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. I might put these up individually on my Instagram and do like a rating thing. People can pick between what they liked more. That could be fun. So if you're not following me on Instagram, it's just Tropical Plant Party on Instagram. Oh, and before I go, there was one, one thing I need to touch on. I mentioned before how with the mums, I like to give them a good amount of space. See the mum? It's back there. I mentioned them needing some space to mound out, and I don't want to pack them too tightly. Like this one over here, packed a little bit tight. But that's okay because I'm treating that one more as an annual. I don't want anybody to be under the impression that if you buy a mum that's in flower that all this that you plant it and it's going to grow into a great big bushy plant. It's not usually how it works. Once they're in flower, their growth pretty much stops. You can still get some. They'll still put out some new growth from the bottom sometimes, but where the flowers are is where that growth typically stops. As far as the vertical growth goes, that pretty much stops once they start to bud out. Giving this a lot of space was thinking more forward to next year. Not so much this year. I don't expect this plant to now flush out and become a big bushy mum like these ones that are over here on the ground. That has to be thought about in the spring beforehand. I just wanted to make that clarification. I didn't want to confuse anybody. Oh, they smell so good. Especially these cute little pink ones down here. They smell fantastic. That's enough. Did enough here. Like I said, hope everybody's doing well. Saying it again because I mean it. I'm just so happy to have been able to come out here and get things planted. It's been so long. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.